Hello, today we are covering 7.2, similar polygons. You will be able to use proportions to identify similar polygons and solve problems using the properties of similar polygons. The vocab for today is similar polygons and scale factor. So first thing, we are going to identify similar polygons. Similar polygons have the same shape but not necessarily the same size. So congruence is when we have the same shape and the same size. Similarity is a little different than that. Um, with a similar polygon, we have two polygons are similar if and only if their corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding side lengths are proportional. So I do want to point out corresponding angles are still congruent, but the side lengths are proportional, not congruent. In the diagram below, ABCD is similar to WXYZ. If you notice, we have our congruent angles still matching up. We have a similarity statement that is like a congruent statement in the fact that A and W are congruent, angle B and angle X are congruent, and so on and so forth. But our corresponding sides are no longer congruent. Instead, what you would have first set congruent to each other and congruent polygons, we actually make into a fraction. So we would have said AB is congruent to WX. That's no longer the case. Instead, now we are making a proportion out of those, okay? So what you would have set congruent is not congruent anymore. Don't get in a rush and try to set things equal now for side lengths because they're not. We have to set up that proportion. So first things first here, we are going to practice with this new idea and vocab just to make sure we have a hold of that. So if we have triangle ABC is similar, good thing to point out I should say, this little squiggle by itself is meaning similar. The squiggle with the equals is still congruent. Okay, so when we're talking about similar things, we want to use this guy. When we're talking about congruent things, we want to use this guy. They are different. Make sure you use the correct symbol. Anyway, ABC is similar, squiggle, to triangle RST. List all pairs of congruent angles and write a proportion that relates to the corresponding sides. I do want to point out, these things are not always drawn to scale, so I would look at the similarity statement. I would say that angle A is congruent to angle R because the angles are still congruent. Angle B is congruent to angle S, and angle C is congruent to angle T. Okay, so we named all pairs of congruent angles. Now we need to write a proportion that relates the corresponding sides. That'll look like this guy here. Okay. So the proportion is also having to do with the similarity statement. We can say previously we would have said AB is congruent to RS based on this. Now we are going to say AB over rs is equal to notice how i'm not marking those congruent because they aren't i'm just circling them bc over st is equal to ac over rt all right now you could have flipped all of these. You could have said RS over AB equal to ST over BC equal to RT over AC. I just matched up the one triangle with the other triangle in the numerator denominator. It doesn't really matter which one is where. They are still correct proportions. Okay, so here we want to say uh, which one of these is not a true statement? So if triangle GHK is similar to PQR, determine which of the following statements is not true. So we know that HGK is congruent 
or we want to know if HGK is congruent to angle QPR. So HGK is this guy here. QPR is this guy here. Maybe it would help to use the similarity statement to go ahead and mark which angles are congruent to each other. That way we can just take a quick look. We know that that guy does check out then. I'm going to skip the next one and go to KR. Well, those are congruent, so we're good to go there. We need to look at GH and PQ. We would have originally, when we were talking about congruence, said that those were congruent, so we can make them into a fraction. That checks out. How about GK and PR? That one also checks out. So I'm assuming this last one, D, is the one that doesn't work. GHK is this angle, and QPR is this angle. Those are not congruent. So this guy is our not true statement. Okay, so the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides of two similar polygons is called the scale factor. The scale factor depends on the order of comparison. So in the diagram, triangle ABC is similar to triangle XYZ. Notice, not drawn to scale. If we're talking about the scale factor of triangle ABC to triangle XYZ, we need to put the number from triangle ABC in the numerator and the number from triangle XYZ in the denominator. It depends on the order of comparison. Likewise, if we had XYZ first and then comparing that to ABC, then we flip them um, for our scale factor, okay? So this is really just saying that this triangle is double the size of this one or this triangle is half the size of this one. So now we're gonna do some numbers with this. So Jan is designing a new menu for the restaurant where he works. Determine whether the size for the new menu is similar to the original menu. If so, write the similarity statement in scale factor. If not, explain your reasoning. So, what we want to do. First thing I'm going to tell you to do is always look at the angles. You must have congruent angles in your two shapes for them to even be similar polygons or triangles. In this case, they are all 90s, so that's not extremely helpful. But on some on your homework, that will be. If the angles are congruent, then you move into comparing the sides. So I'm going to compare the length, or I guess that probably would be the width of the paper, to each other. I'm going to set up a proportion, 12 over 10. And then I'm going to compare the other two sides. Notice the right side paper it does want new menu over original menu, new menu to original menu, so I'm setting it up like that. So this is all new menu numbers, this is all old menu numbers. Now there's a couple different ways you can decide if these are proportional. You can either reduce these fractions. If the refractions reduce and are the same, these are similar sized menus. If they're not the same, then they're not similar sized menus. So you'll notice those fractions do not reduce to the same thing. So these are not similar. I would say that the proportion of the side lengths is not similar or that the scale factors are not the same.
The second way you could check this is by taking this same proportion and cross multiplying. If the cross multiplication of these is the same thing, then they are similar in size. If not, they're not similar. So that could be another reasoning here. Okay? Now, if it was the same, we would have had to have written a similarity statement and scale factor. It's not, so we'll get to that on the next problem. So this one is, Talia is a wedding planner who is making invitations. Determine whether the size for the new invite is similar to the original invite. So new to old. If so, write the correct similarity statement and scale factor. So first thing, once again, they're all 90, so the angles don't really matter here. We now need to check the proportion of the sides. So I'm going to go new. To old, so new over old should equal the other sides. If not, something's up here. I'm going to check this by fraction reducing, although you could do it the other way. If you do the fraction reducing, you get your scale factor right away if they are the same. So notice because these are the same, that checks out. Our scale factor is simply 2. And then our similarity statement is like a congruent statement, but instead of a congruent symbol, it's a similar symbol. We match up our angles and our sides that are similar to each other, and then write it down. And that is our similarity statement. OK? We'll keep chugging. Now, we can also find variables here. Now, before, it was as simple as saying, OK, these two between the triple and the four tick marks have to be equal to each other because they're congruent. The problem is we no longer have congruences. So we need to set up a proportion to solve. So get it out of your head that we always just equal everything. We're going to have to start using proportions now. They're not hard. They just take a little bit of thinking. So find one set of sides, in this case between the single and the double tick mark, that are just numbers. It doesn't tell us do A, B, C, D, E, 2, R, S, T, U, V. So I can choose what number I put on top. I'm going to put the bigger number on top, which means when I put how I'm solving for x, the x needs to go on top as well because the 6 and the x are in the same shape. From here, I simply cross multiply, and I get 18 equals 4x. I finish solving, and I get 4.5x. Make sure that's right. Just give me a second. Yep, as our solution for x. Now from here, I'm going to use that 6 over 4 scale factor again because it tells us these are similar. I can just state that these are without having to decide if they are or not. And then I'm going to put 8 over y plus 1. Once again, like the previous lesson, we must make sure that we distribute our 6 throughout. And then we solve. So we end up getting 4.3 repeating as our solution for y. Now you can do a quick check. You can say, OK, so this one is 6, this one is 4. There's not that much difference. Let's make sure that x is checking out. So 4.5 should be just bigger than 3. It is. And then 8 should be just bigger than this guy, which is actually 5.3 when you plug that in. So that pretty much checks out too. I'll actually show you on the next problem how you can be more thorough in that check. Okay. So on this one, we're going to follow the same process as the last one to find two sides that are supposed to be similar to each other. In this case, they have to be because they tell us these are similar. 
between the single and the double tick marks. It doesn't matter which one I put on top. And then I'm going to solve for A. Because I put the bigger number on top, I need to put 4 on top here. And then I cross multiply. And I solve. So A equals 2.4. Now I'm going to finish this problem out a little different than the last one. I don't necessarily suggest doing this because if you get your solution for A incorrect, then you'll definitely get your solution for B incorrect. But I want to show you that if you did it either way, you will get the same solution. So I can set this up 4 over 2.4 must equal 2 over B minus 6. I could also set this up 5 over 3 equals 2 over B minus 6. Either way, we're actually going to get the same solution. Whoopsie. Mistake. So that's that one. If I solve it the other way, which I would probably choose this way generally, because that way I'm likely to get B correct even if I got A incorrect. So you'll notice no matter which way you do it, as long as A is correct, you get the same solution. Now, I'm going to erase one of these. I do want to show you how you can be more thorough in your checking. So I know 5 thirds should be our scale factor. But the rest of these should be the same. So 4 over 2.4 should equal the decimal that 5 divided by 3 is. And 2 over, notice I need to plug this guy in here. So it's 2 over 1.2 should also be the same. It's not 7.2. You get that wrong. Okay? So if you check these, we actually do get 1.6 repeating for all of them. That means we definitely got these right. We're good to go there if you want to be extra thorough when you're checking. Now, one more thing that we can add on. Perimeters of sim similar polygons are also proportional to the scale factor between them. So if you just knew two sides of uh, two polygons, or a side each of the two polygons, and one perimeter, you could solve for the perimeter of the other one without trying to find the other sides. So, let's try some out. If A, B, C, D, E is similar to R, S, T, U, V, find the scale factor of A, B, C, D, E. So, be careful here. We need to do this one in the numerator and this one in the denominator. And the perimeter of each. So, I'm going to go ahead and copy over what I know about each of these shapes respectfully. And then I know this guy, A, B, C, D, E, must have the number on top of the other one and I'm going to use these guys. So that is our scale factor. We're going to use that to find the perimeter. Now unfortunately we don't quite have enough information to just go ahead and finish this problem out. We actually need to either solve for ST or both AB and DC. Either one is the same amount of work. We just have to choose. I'm going to choose to solve for AB, which will then in turn give me BC. So I need to use my scale factor, 4 over 7, equals, I'm going to call this guy X, over 
that ends up giving me 42 equals 7x or x equals 6. Now if you're extra smart about it, you'll notice that this also equals 6. And because all three of these are the same, this guy must equal 10.5 here. Now, I do want us to use the new special math way that we just learned about for finding the perimeter. So I'm not going to just add all of these up individually, although that's totally valid. You could do that if you wanted, find all the pieces and add them. I'm going to show the shortcut way, which isn't so much of a shortcut on this ex specific example. So I know this guy's perimeter is 26. I just added them up in my head. I'm trying to find this guy's perimeter. I'm going to call him P. So I use my scale factor 4 over 7. The perimeters also follow with that scale factor. So I'm going to do 26 over P. And then I can finish solving. So P is going to equal 45.5 for our bigger pentagon. Okay? Now, if you were to just add each of these numbers, you would also find that it was 45.5. All right, we're going to do one more. All right, so if LMNOP is similar to V, W, X, Y, Z, find the perimeter of each polygon, this one makes a little more sense to use that new special way. So we know the perimeter of this top shape is 60. I just added them up in my head. We have something that we can use as a scale factor here. We know OP and YZ are similar to each other. So we can say, and it doesn't tell us which order to write a scale factor, I'm going to do 8 over 6 equals 60 over P for the perimeter of the smaller one. Go ahead and cross multiply. Oopsie. Solve for the perimeter. And find that the perimeter of the smaller shape is 45. Now, you could have went ahead and found all the missing sides here and then just added them up. Totally valid. It's just a little more work. Okay? All right. Have a good evening. That's all for today.